Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lecture we have seen how we can publish some web logs through Telnet server using Flume. So where we have set up the Telnet as a source and we have used Logger as a sync and publish the real time data using Apache Flume. But that was just for your basic understanding. But let's now get real and publish some files directly to a HDFS directory. So where we will set the spool directory as a source which listens to any new files coming into that folder or we can say directory and it will just ingest it in a real time along with its timestamp into our HDFS directory. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for this lecture, just so I have already spun up the HDP sandbox and it's in a running condition now. So just open the putty terminal and log in as Murray underscore dev. We have done this a million times. So I hope you will remember the password, right? Okay, so once we are in, we'll just log in as a root user to get all the privileges. And now we need our configuration file. So in the previous lecture, we have set up the config file and given the telnet as a source and logger as sync. But in this lecture, let's make it more interesting. So first step would be just get our config file. So I have already uploaded it in our GitHub repository. So to get that, I hope you know the command. So just give like wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patil 11 slash hadoop repository branch is main slash file name is flume underscore log dot conf. So just see if it has any errors. If not, just hit enter and that's it. We got our file. So let's have a look into our file to understand more about its source and sync and all the configuration. So we'll just look into the file now. Yeah. So as you can see, it is more like similar as our previous file where we have defined the source as R1, sync as K1 and the channels is C1. And as you can see, this A1 is nothing but our agent name. So whenever we kick off our flume agent, this we need to provide as an argument. Then comes to configuring the source. As I already told you that our source would be the spool directory. So this source will nothing but listens to some directory in your Linux machine and see if there is any new entries of data. So if you put any new files in it, it will listens to it and publish the data line by line into your sync. So as you can see, this we are given as a source path. So in home Maria underscore dev, we will make a directory called spool and put our logs file or any other file we need to trim. And here we have given the file header as true and also enabled the timestamp interceptor. So what it does is it will just automatically create the timestamp for each row from our file. So each event will have its own timestamp from when it got inserted into this pool directory. So this is very helpful if you're dealing with huge data sets and you want to process it along the way. So that's why we have given this argument here. So this was all about the source. But as you can see in the sync, which is our next point here, we have mentioned the sync type as HDFS as we are listening to this directory. And if any files come into it, it will directly go to HDFS. So, and it will go to this path. So in user Maria underscore dev, we will make a flume directory. And here, as you can see this percent Y percent M. So this is the power of Hadoop. So this will give some specific timestamp for that event. So once you got the file, it will make the directory name similar to this. So this will be the date and this will be the time. So this is how your folder structure will look like in HDFS and we can access it. I hope you already know through Ambari and also every file will have the events dash as its prefix to let you know that this file belongs to the events. So this is we are providing for better naming convention. And here it will make new directory every 10 minutes. So these three arguments does that. So let's say if you put a file at 10 AM, it will listen to it and ingest the data from 10 AM to the next 10 minutes. And if you, if you ingest the data at 10, 15, it will create a new directory 10, 10. So I hope you got the idea. And if you go to the last, as you can see here, we have defined the memory channel type which is similar to our last config file and also the capacity and transaction capacity is same. So as we are dealing with small data sets, we are not going to mess up with these values. So I hope you got a clear idea what it does. And at the last, 
you have binded the source and sync to the channel so this is very straightforward because we only have the single channel for our source and the same for our sync so to sum it up so it is just listening to this path in our linux machine and detects if any new files entered in it so if we just put any file let's say if we insert any log files or text file whatever it is it will listens to it and ingest it by using the sdfs sync type to this directory so enough talking let's kick off the flume agent by passing this config file so we'll just go back and the next step would be we need to make the spool directory in our sdb sandbox and also we need to make the flume directory inside the sdfs so the first step would be just give mkdir then spool okay so we have make the spool directory now and now we have to log in to the ambari to create our sync directory so now we are in the localhost 8080 which is the port name for ambari and we will be logging in as a maria underscore dev so just sign in and as you can see all my cluster and all the services are running fine without any issues so you need to go to the files view now so just go to files view it will do some hdfs checks and all okay we are in so we need to make the directory in the user so go to user and again go to maria underscore dev yeah so i found it So in here we will create a new folder named flume. So give the flume and add it. So we have successfully made the directory. So the next step would be go back to the command line and kick off our flume agent. So for that purpose, let's create the new PuTTY terminal because why not? And login. Okay. So again, login as root. And now. you need to kick off the flume agent so the path is cd user hadoop hdp slash current slash flume server and in here we have the bin directory where we can kick off our flume agent so you need to give like bin slash flume dash ng space agent then we need to give the conf and we'll keep it as default so give the configuration and now we need to pass our config file so conf dash file and this will take our file present in the home maria underscore dev so give like home slash maria underscore dev slash flume underscore logs dot conf obviously then you need to give the name of the agent which is a1 and you need to pass the argument for d flume so d is capital so just look out for that and you need to set the logger as info so you'll get all the details here logger equal to and give the console so you are ready to kick off your flume agent now so just hit enter so it will take time to spun up because it is taking hdfs as a sync so let it run so now you have to open your previous terminal and put the file into the spool directory so as you already know that we have the access underscore log dot text file from our previous lectures so we'll copy that file into our directory so let's do that so just give like cp access underscore log dot text and we'll copy it in spool slash and the name of the file so we'll call it as i don't know logs dot text that is also fine so just enter Okay so we will again go to the spool directory so just give like cd spool and give ls so here we have the logs.txt file copied and as our flume server is running let's verify it if our file has already streamed into our hdfs so just minimize these two tabs and here just make a small refresh so just make a small refresh yeah so as we have the flume directory so we'll go to flume now and there you go you have the file present here so it is like a utc time so so i hope you know that this video was recorded at 16 of november and the time is also there so it is pretty early i know and just you can go to it so it was created at 19 hours 20 minutes so just go into that as you can see you got the 00 file So this is like tree structure, and there you go. Here are all the events from our access underscore log dot text file. This all files are created here. So as you can see, there are so many streams out there, and as you can see, every file has the prefix as events. 
so it's just a good naming convention so if you just pick into this file so we'll just open it so as you can see it's a sequence file so it is not readable you will not understand it but you know what sequence is very good if you're dealing with hive and pick so sequence is good format for storing and consuming the data in a, into hdfs and i hope you got the clear idea how we have stream the log files present in our local file system to the hdfs by using flume and it does that in a real time scenario so once you're done with your work just head back terminate the processes and at last you can just shut down your hdp sandbox by giving the acpi shutdown this is a good practice and i must tell you to follow it once you have done with your work so if you have any issues or difficulties in this lecture just let me know in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible i hope you like this lecture so please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media which i have linked in the description below thanks for watching